Um, so what I usually teach in driving is I have like three or four, uh, three or four tips that will really keep you in line. So when you're out on the practice area or you're uh, playing a tournament, you can basically think about it to yourself and line yourself up for any type of shot and it should help you through a tunnel shot when you're in the wide open or anything like that. Because I believe that no matter what type of course you're on, you should always have the same type of throw because it's always gonna be in one direct line. So if you guys wanna break out a disc, I'll talk about grip for a second. And for me, when I throw all of my drives over 250 feet, uh, I throw with a power grip and I have all my fingers up underneath the rim except for the front pointer finger. And a lot of people think when they say, when I, when I say power grip, they think the front finger needs to be underneath. And then when they try it, they hold on to it because it's basically a hook underneath it. But you don't want to have that front finger underneath it. You want to have basically your three fingers almost slanted and then your front finger almost just a little bit over the rim. And a big thing is the thumb. And a lot of people think that you have to lay your thumb like this across the disc. And a lot of people think you need to have your thumb towards the middle or towards the end. You want to have your thumb just on the outside of the rim of the disc. And for me, I put my thumb basically on the disc like I'm putting my thumbprint on it. A lot of people try to lay their thumb down onto the disc, but that's, that's not necessarily going to help you a lot. If it's comfortable for you, then that's good. And as long as the disc is not coming out of your hand like a butterfly, then it's going to be all right coming out of your hand. Um, and besides the power grip, I use uh, what most people call a fan grip. And I'm basically pinching it with these two fingers and my thumb on the middle. So with putters, I'm basically pinching it with these two fingers and my thumb right in the middle. And that's where all of my, that's where all of my pressure is coming from. So if you guys grab a putter, and, uh, in 2010, I threw power grip for every single shot, no matter if it was 100 feet or 500 feet. And when I learned to throw fan grip, I raised my rating by 25 points. And then I won the US title at the end of the year. And I, and I fully believe it's because I learned to throw shorter shots and land it close to the basket with almost no speed. So the closer you can get, obviously, the less stress you're going to have on your putting. So I really suggest that you learn how to uh, really get good at your short game, learn everything about it, learn any type of angle. And if you're one of those people that just cannot learn how to throw farther, you've practiced as much as you can, do as much as you can to uh, get as close to the basket within 200 feet, because that's where you're always going to beat your friends. You're always going to beat people within 200 feet. If you can get it close with no type of putting, then it's going to take so much stress off of your game. But does anybody have a question on grip? You guys kind of looking at your disc. It's not, it's not these two fingers together like that, but for me, I'm, I'm almost on top of it. So without the disc in my hand, my thumb is almost on top of my fingers. And for me, I have a little bit of a larger hand, but some people have smaller hands, some people have a little bit bigger fingers. So whatever is comfortable in your hand is, is, is good. There's no right and wrong for grip, as long as your disc is coming out of your hand with a good release. What are you doing with your other fingers? When I'm throwing with the fan grip, just kind of the, pinky, the pinky goes down towards the bottom and it doesn't really do much. I have no type of power with, the, with, the, with my pointer finger and my pinky. It's not gonna help me that much. It, it just basically stabilizes it. So with this, I could throw it from, from 250 feet pretty easily. I would have no problem having that type, that type of uh, power come off of it. And thumb is the same thing when I'm, when I'm driving is it's just on the outside of the edge. So there's the rim and then that's where I put my thumb. So, so you're saying that your thumb would be kind of like right here instead of right, the top? Right, right. Right. Okay. Some people have it like this. There's a lot of pros on tour who throw like this okay. with their thumbs and kind of are pinching the flight plate. But for me, that's not that's not very comfortable. For me, I have it for, for me. I have it like that. Just off center. Just off center. Yep. Yeah. Does anybody have a question on grip? Back to the driver grip. Yep. Um, you keep all back fingers on. Front finger. Yep. So it's basically like this, but then this front finger just barely goes over. Yeah, yeah. Well, I see a lot of people also have the three finger grip and they hold it like this, yeah. kind of. 
and that, that as long as it works for you, then, then, it's, then it's fine. But if it's coming out of your hand like this and you can't throw a putter more than 200 feet without it flipping over, then you probably have a problem and you probably should change it. Yeah. Where does your power come from when you're, when you're throwing these grips? With power grip? You have to seat your disc in a particular place. Uh, for me, it's not really a particular place in my hand. It's just all about the grip and I feel if it's secure. So if, it's, if, you're, if you have your grip and it's coming out of your hand, then you probably need to find something that's better. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that answer your question at all? I think so. Somebody okay. said that you should like seat it in between your thumb and your first See, finger. See, I've, I've heard a lot of people say that. Yeah. And for me, if I put my disc into my thumb right here and I lay it over, I feel I have no type of control on it. But for me, I'm controlling because for driving, you're basically controlling the outside edge and throwing that as hard as you can out of your fingers. So for upshots, that's why I use this to get really technical with it is I control more of the center of the disc and I'm controlling the spin. But for driving and throwing it harder, I'm really just trying to get it as hard as I can. So this has the most type of pressure for throwing farther. But for me, I, that's, there's no type of pressure right there for me if I put it into my thumb, like you're talking about. A lot of people do that and then they lay their thumb on top. And for me, there's no type of secure it feels like it would just fall out of my hand, not very tight. But if I hold it like this and put my thumb down, I feel like I can rip the disc apart. That was the best way to maximize your distance throwing over, under stable or over stable. Like if you're gonna practice. It's, it's all, it all depends on, on, on how you are. So to move on to the next thing, uh, that actually comes up in, in a, just a few more, few more minutes of, of talking kinda. So, uh, but if I, don't, if I don't bring it up, ask me again, okay? So the next thing, uh, that, I'm, that I'll talk to you about is lining up for a shot. And no matter if it's a Anheuser or Heiser shot, I'm always coming at the end of the tee pad differently. So if I'm going for a straight shot down the middle, my run up is going to make sure that my feet and my shoulders are moving in that direction at least three fourths of the time. So when I'm running up, I don't want to keep my shoulder, I'll, I'll look this way, like this is the tee pad. but I don't want to have my shoulders looking towards the tee pad and then all of a sudden turning and then throw it. I want to be able to have my shoulders square. That's why you see a lot of pros when you watch video. You see a lot of pros line up like this because this is straight when you're throwing a disc. This is not straight. Straight is going to be wherever your right shoulder points and then it leans that way. So with that being said, when I come from right to left and I come this way, my shoulders are set up to always match my feet. So this is set up to be in an Anheuser shot right here because I have to come across my body. Does that make sense? So the opposite obviously is gonna be a big hyzer shot. So when I come through and I'm coming across, my feet are lined up to be to the right side of the pin of where I'm going and it's going to be right to left. Does that make sense? So I'm coming down the middle obviously, I'm gonna be straight down the middle. So the shoulders and the feet are key to keeping you online the whole time. So with that, you want to be able to keep your shoulders in line throughout your whole reach back and when you're pulling through. So just like in golf, just like in baseball, you want to keep your head over the contact point. So when I reach back, I'm keeping my head right down. And if I pull my head before my shoulders turn, my shoulders are going to be turning before I pull through. That means I'm pulling it to the right. So if I keep my head down the whole way and I keep my head down until the, my back shoulder brings it up, I'm gonna be lined up the whole way. So if you flip it, you're so when you're So when you see somebody, when you. you see somebody lining up and their feet and their shoulders are lined up this way, and then they come through, and then they're trying to watch their disc or, or lean with it, all of a sudden your shoulders are lined up Just to throw this way. Off. So you're probably gonna grip lock it. So with throwing an Anheuser, you're almost trying to turn it over or almost like a little bit of a grip lock because you're lining up this way and you have to come across. So if you watch really slow motion video, your head is going to be in front of you a little bit more on an Anheuser because you have to get over on it, especially on rollers because you're really trying to get that angle over. Is that the best way to learn rollers? Just move your head. <laughs> it's just really just trying to torque it over as much as you can with rollers. 
So, so keep your head down and trust your shoulder line. Yeah, you want to trust your shoulder line. And a good way to test uh, to keep your head down is to line up on, on a spot like this pole, for example, is I should be able to grab a disc and close my eyes and then throw it right towards the pole without even knowing that it's right there. So when you're in the wide open and you're in the woods, you should be able to line up and look where you're going and then keep it lined up the whole way. And you know if you're staying on that same line and you commit to having your feet and your shoulders in the right position, then you're gonna hit that line almost every time. Does that make sense? Any questions? Yeah, and it's, and it's all about timing. And, and when you watch video and you go, out to the, you go out to the field and you take pictures or whatever while you're practicing, it's, it's a really slim difference of going like this and going like this. Because when you actually pull through and you keep your head down, you feel it all on your arm and you feel it down your back because you're actually pulling through. It's kind of like picking somebody up off the ground. You're going to be pulling through and actually use these muscles. But if you lead with your shoulder, you're almost just going like this. And that's basically the only thing that you have. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Questions? What, when you're leading with your head? Yeah. Yeah, because it's going to make you pull. It's going to make you pull this way. So your shoulders are already lined up to pull. So you lose a lot of power, right? So you lose a lot of power because you want to be able to have all of your power from here forward. Yeah. And if you go to here, and then you lead with your shoulders, you're basically limiting yourself to here, and then you don't have the right release, so you're trying to just release it right here. So it's everything that you have left right here. So it's everything that you have left, and you yeah. feel like you're just tossing it. Makes sense. Is that any, any questions on that, on lining up? So the next thing is uh, kind of an obvious question, but did anybody start disc golf with a really fast driver as their first disc? Almost everybody. Yeah. Everybody gets their first disc and then they start to go like this. And then they learn that they can turn it over really hard or throw it sidearm and throw it really hard this way and then it'll fly somehow. But when you get into the woods or you try to get better, you learn that you can't do this with every disc. You can't do this because it just turns over and then you think it's a bad disc, like you're saying. So when you start out, if you could go back and start out, an understable disc is the best way to learn how to play because it puts you in a position to learn the most consistent shot, with a, which is the hyzer shot. And if you can put yourself in a consistent position every time, you'll be the best player that you can possibly be. And to be in that hyzer position, it's the same thing in golf, same thing in baseball, is you get your nose over your feet, bend your knees a little bit, and then you're keeping everything right here. When you watch somebody and you see them stand straight up and down and they're not very wide apart, they have a lot of room right here to move their arm. They could be here, they could be here, they could come over. But if they're a little bit wider than shoulder length and your head is over your body, you can't have your hand up here, otherwise you're, you're taking yourself out. But you wanna keep it over, just like in baseball, just like in golf, if you go and you watch footage of Major League Baseball players playing, they're all leaning over and if they're right-handed, it's a little bit, it's the complete opposite. So they're coming through, right hand is coming this way, left right-handed disc golfer coming through, leaning over right here. So you see a lot of people when they throw really big hyzer shots or really far, is they're coming through and they're almost jumping off the ground. Because when they come through, they're, they have all this power and then it's coming through and then up. They're not, when you see them throw a roller or turning their back, and they're keeping their hand up, they're not standing like this. You're not gonna see anybody throw like this and throw a roller. They're gonna have their body position match their shot, so they're leaning back to where they're ripping this way. Does that make sense? So when you go out and you go to practice different shots, make sure that your body is matching whatever you're trying to do. Make sure you're not standing up and down to where you have no, there's nothing going on right here. You wanna be a little bit wider than shoulder length, and then leaning over and keep everything in a tight position right here. You're trying to keep it in your core? So yeah, you try to keep it right here. Above it. Yep. Okay. There's, there's a big myth where you should be above your shoulder or your shoulder should be right here. And I tell everybody, you want to keep your forearm almost as close to your, to your core as possible. And then you want to keep your elbow almost at a, at a 45 degree angle or so. And when you reach back, it's, you're, you're tensing here 
and, you're, and when you pull through, you tense right here, and then it goes all the way down your back. So when you pull through, that should be what's doing the work. It shouldn't be your elbow, it shouldn't be your shoulder. It's that tricep in this. Yeah, lap. right here. And then you're pulling through. I'm sure it's the same for golf, but it's on this side. When, you're, when you pull through, it's just all that muscles right there is ripping through. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, but it's this, it's for throwing backhand. It's the same thing for sidearm is, is I'll, I'll talk about disc angle and disc angle. Uh, you want to keep it, whatever you're throwing for that particular shot, you want to keep your disc on the same angle the whole time. So if I'm running up for a big Anheuser shot, I'm going to be running up with the disc tilted like an Anheuser. So when I come through, I'm coming across my body and I'm not reaching back with the hyzer and then having a quarter of a second to go like this. So I want to hold it as whatever I'm trying to throw. Does that make sense? So when I come through with the hyzer, I'm keeping it right here the whole way. So there's no type of mess up at all. And sorry, what was your question? Sidearm? Forehand. Okay. So one big, uh, beginner mistake is that your wrist if you hold your disc out in front of you everybody grip it and then hold the disc out in front of you and then take it out but still have your wrist in the same position and then see what it's at if you're if your thumb is pointing up it's probably you probably have a lot of problems throwing the disc nose up like this and the way i explain it is your plane is taking off when it's coming out of your hand so all the air that you created is going underneath the disc and then it's going to shoot straight up. Does anybody have that problem yeah. of it going up or you have to throw really understable discs and then they don't flip over. And once you do this, it's going to slow your disc down entirely. It's going to take all the momentum out of your disc and then push it straight up. But you want your hand to be almost pointing down. You're not, you're, you don't want to be stressing down, but you just want to have your hand almost tilted at the ground a little bit because that's going to have your wrist pointing to where it comes out of your hand as streamlined as possible. Does that make sense? So when I reach back, right, I'm keeping my hand all the way down. And when I come through, it's the same way. I don't, I don't want to come through. And this is something when you have an overstable disc, you create the bad habit of coming through like this and then having to go this and you turn it over out of your hand. And then once the disc comes out, it looks like a butterfly and it's flying like this because you mixed, you mixed this angle with going like this and all of a sudden it doesn't know which way to fly. So you want to have that straight wrist release where your hand is coming down almost to uh, uh, nine o'clock, nine or 10 o'clock, as long as it's not stressing when I'm reaching back. I'm not, I'm not forcing it to be at eight o'clock or I'm not making it be at nine o'clock. If you can only get to 10 o'clock on your wrist and you come through, that's fine, but you shouldn't be working to get your wrist back. And once it comes through, your hand is almost going to one or two. You shouldn't be opening up your hand entirely to where you can feel a lot of stress on the back or front of your wrist. So a lot of people think their, their distance comes from their wrist, but, but that has no truth in it at all. But all the power comes from your forearm and like I was saying, the back of your back of your arm right here, all the way down your back. So when you reach back, make sure it's nice and loose. And when you're pulling through, you really want to tense up right here and then all the way down your back. Does that make sense? So when you, when you sit there and you practice your drive, make sure you're going like this. Make sure you're going like this. And then if you're doing like this at all, or you feel your wrist break and your forearm comes up when you're throwing a backhand drive, that means you turned it over. You want, to keep, you want to keep this part almost entirely down, either down or just flat, your forearm right here. So when I come through, my hand is not going like this. I'm not trying to do this. I don't want my forearm to come up. I'm trying to keep it down the whole time. Does that make sense? So a good way to test that Here and then still have that hand if I'm trying to get height, I'm, I'm keeping my hand lower and then coming up. And, and remind me of that question because that's a good thing to bring up. Um, but a good thing 
a good test for yourself is take two really understable discs. And I use this really beat up putter and I use a really beat up mid range. And I go and play a two disc round. And a good way to really practice good form and really practice with good, with good wrist is to throw those as hard as you can and really work on keeping them on hyzer the whole way. Because if you can keep a really understable disc to go out 200 feet and then turn to the right, that means that you have good form and you did, you did it correctly. But if you turn it over out of your hand within 100 feet, that means that you rolled your wrist and that was a bad throw. Or you can play catch with like an ultimate, an ultimate disc or a lid. That's a good way to test if you have good form. Because if you can come out and you have pure wrist and it's all spin and not any torquing it over, then, that, then that's going to be a, a good throw basically. What was your question one more time? So you're trying to get height. I was just trying to figure, it just seems like it's yeah. awkward to get up here and then have that wrist right. down a little bit. Right, so when I'm getting height is uh, a way to look at it is anything you do on the left side of your body, it's always gonna mirror on the front side. So when you reach back, and for me, I'm trying to keep a straight reach back. Let's say I'm throwing straight in distance. I'm keeping it straight and then coming through and trying to keep it straight. And if anything, you try to keep it down, low to high. Okay. Low to high is, is what a lot of people say is the most amount of power, almost like you're picking somebody up. Okay. But when I say low to high, it's, it's only a difference of a few, a few inches. So when you're coming up, that's where all your power is coming from. But what I, if I came high to low, that disc is coming down and having that front of the disc come up and it's almost going to be like an air bounce. I'm with you. So when you see a lot of people take those discs, like I was talking about the understable disc and it makes it look like it was overstable, it's because you reach back with a high, high release or high reach back, sorry. And then when you come through, it's bouncing and then coming up. But if you keep your disc lower, almost by your hip, and come through, and then finish your hand off lower than your shoulder, you're going to have a, a straighter release. Does that make sense? Yeah, so when I'm trying to throw higher, let's say I was trying to throw over that net, I would reach back and have a really low reach back because I'm going to come up with it. All right. And try to keep that below your shoulder. Right. So when I'm coming up, my hand is coming above my shoulder. Okay. But if I'm coming straight and I'm, and I'm teaching somebody to throw, I'm trying to keep my hand below my shoulder. Okay. So if you have a problem with really high release, sit there and really focus on where your hand is finishing at your shoulder, because it should be below it. You're always gonna keep it low if you keep your hand below your shoulder. So if there's a low ceiling in a tournament, I tell myself all I have to do is keep my hand below my shoulder and I'm gonna be able to hit that line. If I ever keep my hand above it, I know that it's gonna be a little bit higher and it's probably not, it's probably gonna hit the ceiling. But the same thing goes for sidearm. So when I reach back with sidearm, is I'm keeping my hand at my hip right here. I don't wanna be here. I wanna be right here and then I wanna pull through the same way. I had a problem. No, I try to keep it on the same line the whole way. So if I, I have to bend my elbow a little bit just to keep it on that same line. Same thing goes for backhand, is you have to be able to bend your elbow to keep it on the same line the whole way. So when I reach back, I don't want to come here and then out. I want to be able to lead with my elbow here and then forward. So you're keeping your hand as close to your body as you can. So yes, you yes, yeah. And a, and a big uh, mistake that people make is when you reach back, they think that they go around their body. And if you go around your body with the thing that I was telling you about how you're always going to mirror whatever comes to your right, is once you go around, you have to come around. You're not going to go like this and then correct yourself and come like this. It's, it's not going to happen. You're going to reach straight back or you're going to come around and whatever is on the left side is going to mirror on the right side. So you want to set yourself up. What's that? Forehand? Yeah. A little high. My fingers are kind of raw from the golf club. 